guys. Welcome back to Lucid 9. This is Cackling Cat. And not much has happened. Just lots of banter. I'm sure eventually we'll, mur we'll murder and death. We'll murder and death. Or something. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't read that. Oh my gosh. Oh well. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Yes. There are endless posters and billboards plastered with faces of politicians with broad, candid smiles proclaiming in bold letters back to prosperity. The recession is over and do more with more upon scrolling tablets and giant projected screens. That's normal. There's the smoker and his buddy, the random drunkard, the group of tourists clutching electronic pamphlets, tilted, welcome to the glorious metropolis of Isamu, while taking pictures in front of every possible location. And most of all, the ordinary Isumut, Isumite, power walking down sidewalks with resumes clutched in their hopeful hands. That's also normal. Everything is normal. Completely normal. So why do I feel so uneasy? Maybe it's the skyscrapers. I've never liked them. They're too tall. And I always get the impression that they're watching me. Creepy, creepy concept right there. <laughs> Not like guardians either. Not some benevolent force that's watching over the city. More like staring, waiting for the right moment to strike. And then there's the smog. The terrible musky pollution that sits on my skin like a coat of hard mud. Every breath is disgusting, but every breath is ne necessary. I hate this city. I really, really do. Too bad that there's nothing better. Not really. Too bad that Isamu has always been the best, if not only option. Pay attention, you idiot! <laughs> okay. I'm startled out of my thoughts by Masato grabbing my arm and yanking me out of the street. Do you not see the red light? Red means stop. And stop means... Velocity reaches zero, man. You could have been run over by a truck. Despite myself, I'm touched by their concern. I'm fine. Let's go. After eyeing me for a long moment, Yahiko shrugs and bounds to GFC's atomic doors. Atomic. Automatic. Automatic doors. Activating the motion sensor with a flourish. Ladies first. Lady? Where? Right here. You. She slaps a hand on my shoulder with a cheery grin. Oh, good one. You mean Yama's been a girl all this time? Oh, heavens no. That'd be really awkward. Why? Let's go have some chicken. Boy, I'm so hungry. Fried chicken. Mm -mm -mm. She, quick, well, she quickly skips into GFC, leaving Masato thoroughly bewildered. I love how their thing is GFC instead of KFC. It's hilarious. GFC. Like McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get it. Why is it awkward? Beats me. Actually, I'm pretty sure I have a good idea, but there's no way I'm bringing it up. Look, are we having chicken or not? Of course we are. What do you take me for? A no good non-chicken lover? I love the chicken. Well, good thing that neither he nor Yahiro, Yahiko, excuse me, are very perceptive. Without further ado, we enter GFC. General Fried Chicken. That's right. The 
That's right, Jennifer Fried Chicken has always been a favorite of students from the Academy. It's fast, it's cheap, and it's within walking distance. And apparently, the ones that are in other countries are awesome. So, yeah. It's pretty nice, considering that it's a fast food outlet. The tables are clean, the walls are lined with cushion booths, and the red and beige paint slathered, slathered on the walls seems fresh and pristine. For some, the smell of heavy grease and its oil is overbearing. For us, it's the smell of pure heaven. Ah, this place smells like death. Well, most of us. Weren't you the one who uh, was in such a hurry to come in? Mmm, fried chicken. Shit it. After we order and pick up our chicken, we slip into the nearest booth. Masato rifles through his wallet, a frown crossing his lips. Damn. What? The doze kake. The does? What? I, that. Damn that. I have no clue what he just said. <laughs> what? Thankfully, no one else seems to know either. Masato is slightly startled, as if he hadn't noticed what he what we were there. That we were there. He's like, oh yeah, I forgot. I came here with you guys. <laughs> uh, nothing. So, how was class? That's pretty suspicious. But we all decided to let it pass. We're nice like that. Pretty good. But I don't know anyone in my class. What are they giving you a hard time? And punch him in the face. What? Nothing like that. It's just, you know, you guys are a year older and Akira's in a different class than this year. Bah. I'm sure you'll make truckloads of friends. Yes. You're almost as charming as me. Thanks, guys. Despite the cheery exchange, I notice that there's a shadow of, to Rui's eyes. She definitely should have a lot of friends. She's likable, warm, fun, and talented. But for some reason unknown, chooses to spend most of her time with me, a useless cynical cynic and Akira, an optimist with a few screws loose. We've always wanted to ask why, but a small part of me is afraid that the moment I bring it up, she'll realize it and leave. Now, I need to do this. It's the least I can do. Why don't you hang out with your classmates? The words come out... A lot harsher than I intended, but Rui doesn't even seem to be offended. Her expression darkens, but it's one of anger, not hurt. I don't want to hang out around people like them. Okay, why not? They're a bunch of fakes. All they do is judge me or others in the class, or even one another. They're not outright mean, but I don't like it when people talk behind my back. And they pick on this shy girl in our class for no reason. It's stupid. You really hate them, don't you? Not really, but we don't get along. She picks idly at her chicken. The air feels somber and heavy. I've been there when you, when you just make the right kind of comment to just ruin everyone's fun time. Hey, uh, know what we need. A competition? <laughs> of course we do. Now is not the time to bring up a competition, Masato. Actually, that's a good idea. Wait, what? She's never said that before. Generally because Masato's never come up with any good ideas. True. I'll have to sit this one out, or it won't even be a contest. <laughs> so you! Me. Yama. No thanks. You don't even know what it is. Fine. What is it? Who can eat the most triple S's in the shortest amount of time? That sounds horrible and fantastic at the same time. I, I won't lie. 
sounds horrible and fantastic at the same time. I'd be like, yes, no. <laughs> no, thanks. Hey. The Triple S Hot Wing is GFC's most infamous menu item in order of blindingly spicy wings. Sounds delicious. I don't particularly feel like disabling my mouth forever. Thank you. Rui wants to watch. Oh my god, we're gonna maim ourselves for our friends? I guess. Jeez. I glance at Rui. This prospect of watching a competition does seem appealing to her. Probably because she can make fun of the stupidity of it all. Well, if it'll cheer her up. Gosh, I need serious help. Like, seriously, I need help. Fine. You're paying, though. Uh... Never fear, the generous Yahiko Ikari shall bestow you with the necessary funds. He shells some cash to Masato, who takes it with a nod of thanks. Boy, this'll be fun for me. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Why not? You mean, why wouldn't I want to participate in a competition that could potentially ruin my mouth and traumatize me forever? Yeah, exactly. This guy. Sometimes I wonder if he's trying to be this swell. Stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Masato returns and slides two platters of triple S hot wings to the center of the table. Now remember, every good competition needs a good audience. Let me hear it for Team Kuragon! Eh? Hey. hey, Rui. Why ain't you cheer it? Huh? I'm, uh, in character as an audience member who's cheering for Yama. Psha! You win that drama club. Fine, give it up for Team Ishimato! Oh, yay! Everyone in the restaurant drops into silence and stares at us. I elbow, I elbow her in the ribs, feeling a flush creep up my cheeks. Stop that. What?! I'm in character. Sure you are. Sure. Okay, whatever. Let's get going. We lean forward, hands just a hair away from the tray, as Rui looks on with an expectant smile. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Masato immediately starts shoving hot wings into his mouth, but I take a few moments to gather myself before I take a bite. The chicken seems to explode in my mouth, sending streaks of fire down my tongue. I cough violently and I gulp down water. This was a terrible idea. Woohoo! You mustn't fall behind, marvelous minion. Oh, oh, everyone actually is watching. Hey, you gotta cheer for me, Yama, or this ain't any fun. But, but, now that I noticed, it's kind of embarrassing. Gee, thanks. It's not like I'm doing this for you or anything. Grimacing, I shove the remainder of the wings into my mouth and spit it out. The meat burns down my esophagus and simmers in my stomach. Come on, Yama. Needs this cheering squad. <laughs> rip, 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 re. Kick him in the knee. Rip, rip, rass! Kick him in the other knee! Yes! Go, Sato! Go, Sato! Masato spits out his bones on his platter. Three wings down already, and I've just started my second. For some reason, that makes me feel unusually competitive. Woo! You got this! You're beating him! Ice cream, soda, banana, split... We think your team's full of shift to the left, shift to the right. Stand up straight, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> As she finishes her chant and quickly turns away to hide her embarrassment, I barely work through one more mouthful of fried chicken before giving up. There has to be another way. 
Yeah, fifth wing down. Keep going. Um, go, Yama. My eyes land on an innocuous packet sticking from beneath the chicken bucket. GFC hot sauce. Well, despite desperate times call for desperate measures. While Masato reaches for his sixth wing, I surreptitiously rip the end of the hot sauce pocket open and squirt it over his platter. He only smirks at me. Ha! Gonna take more than a little ketchup to win. He bites triumphantly into the wing. Oh, that's not ketchup. It freezes. I swear that steam is coming out of his ears. It's GFC's signature hot sauce. Oh, yeah. Oh, ha, da, 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 da. A desperate Masato launches out of the booth and sprints to the soda machine. What? That was cheating. Is it cheating? If there weren't any rules in the first place? Uh, either way, it was pretty dirty. Poor Masato. She looks pointedly at Masato, who's slowly dragging himself back into the booth while chugging a huge cup of water. I feel a slight tinge of guilt at his suffering, but Rui's obviously improved Rui's obviously improved mood makes it worth it. This ain't the end. He keels over the table, somehow managing to continue drinking from his cup. Oh, that reminds me of the last episode of Gover Mecha. Metro. Gover Metro. I don't know, whatever it is. Of what? You mean you haven't heard of Gover Metro? Do you have to yell so loudly? Honestly, I'm surprised we haven't been kicked out of this out for causing public disturbance yet. But one cannot help but yell at the epicness of Gover Metro! Okay, fine. What is it? It's this web series that a couple of my hallmates made. Remember? Over the summer? Oh, yeah. I saw you running around wearing a long blonde wig or something. Great. That's a mental, mental image that I'm not going to get on my head anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the President of the United States. Well, it's called Akirama in our web series. Isn't that clever? Fighting other politicians defend his country. So, it's like a political drama. No way, dude. That's boring. They battle it out in giant robots. The president is red, white, and blue, of course. It even has an eagle motif and everything. That sounds like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That sounds like the coolest thing I've ever heard. Is he for real? Of course, I'm handling the main event. I'm the president's aide. If you're the president's aide, you're a side character. You're not the lead. Huh? Really? Well, I, for one, I'm proud of you. You finally found your calling, being a background character. I know, right? I'm going to be a star. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the physical manifestation of the saying, ignorance and bliss. Episodes are all up on the website. Just search the title, Gover Mecca, and you'll all, you're all set. I'm having a hard time pronunciating things today. We'll have to check it out. Are you serious? How else? Will I know how to viciously badmouth it? I can't decide whether to be offended or be impressed. Why not both? Hey, you two listening? Sorry, no. No, I wasn't. Sorry. What? Nah, I was just saying that I gotta go back. I briefly checked my phone. It was 6.10 p.m. Almost Masato's curfew. Yeah. He has this thing where he goes to bed at 9.30 sharp every night. Just one more way that he's completely crazy. Discipline, but but crazy. Still, it's best to honor that. The only thing worse than a normal Masato trying to drag me into track is a grumpy Masato trying to drag me into track. Then let's go. 
We head out of the restaurant and back to the academy's right. Back to the wow, and back to the academy right as sun starts to set. Kamas, Kamas. Okay. Anyway, I like got lost in my mind of commas, commas floating around. Anyway, it's kind of a ritual to walk with them, even though I don't live at the dorms anymore. I live in an apartment within walking distance. But since there's nothing and no one waiting for me at my apartment, I kind of just go wherever they go. Maybe it's because our stomachs are full, but we're completely silent on our way back. It's comfortable silence, but still silence. And that means thinking. Overthinking, unfortunately. I almost jump as I see a group of, of three police race by on the opposite side of the street, approaching sirens, piercing the air with their incessant wailing, directed our attention to... Oh no. Oh. A wave of nausea washes over me. The front of a city bus is crumpled against the back of a pickup truck. Thin trails of smoke mixed with the pungent smell of burnt rubber and scrapped metal. The scene is surrounded by a unit of police cars and fire trucks, along with a crowd of shaken people along the sidewalks. How awful. At least they all look okay. We can't do anything about it. Let's go. Masato and Yuhiko nod hastily, but Rui only stares thoughtfully at me. I stare at her. She tilts her head. I shrug. It seems to help her come to a decision as she suddenly turns to Masato and Yahiko with a very convincing smile. Hey, Masato, Yahiko, why don't you guys head on back? I got something to do, real quick. Masato opens his mouth, clearly confused, but Yahiko elbows him in the side and it shakes his head ever so slightly. What? Say, we'd better get back before your curfew. Hold your horses. I was gonna ask. Come along, peasant. Your king commands it. With a final wave, Yahiko drags Masito down the street. Rui turns her attention to me. I'm inviting myself over. Gee, thanks. That's what friends are for. Despite the smirk on her face, I catch her glance at the ruined bus. I can't find it in me to argue with her. Sure, I guess. We switch our routes to a different street, remaining silent as we pass by three more police officers. We reach my married apartment without much difficulty. It's a pretty decent place at a low price. A lot of academy students are known to live here due to its close proximity to the campus. I has a pretty awesome apartment, actually. That's really nice. <laughs> it's like books. Look at that. Like built-ins. Like, sh sh wish my place looked this nice. I mean, I have a nice place, but it's pretty nice. Do a lot of students live here? Yeah, why? Well, what if someone sees us? I don't want them to get the wrong idea. I feel a little uneasy as I remove my shoes. Judging from the blush on her face, it's less that she's worried about a ruined reputation and more that she's trying to cover up certain feelings. Feelings that I'm not ready to deal with. Don't worry, I'm sure they just think we're one of my guy friends. I don't even look like a boy. I only smirk at her as I flop on the sofa. This is the place I know as home, sweet home. Simple furniture, random pieces of clothing here and there, and a basic kitchen crammed into the corner. Not too fancy, but not too shabby in the slightest. Comfortable. Rui doesn't seem to feel the same way. She gives everything a disapproving look as she proceeds through the apartment. I think this place has gotten messier. Susumi! Can I actually? Please? No. She looks over me for a moment and something in her expression shifts. 
So that bus. I sigh noisily, noise, noisily, and close my eyes. Can we talk about something else? You hungry? Huh? I can make some omelets. Isn't that a breakfast food? Instead of replying, I just hear their rhythmic pattern, patter of footsteps against the carpet. In just a few minutes, there's a click-clack of a knife against a chopping board, the gentle sizzle of oil in a frying pan, and the tick-tick-tick-tick of chopsticks whipping against a bowl of eggs. A heavenly aroma rises in the air. Rui. The lack of response, I open my eyes. It takes a little effort, but I manage to pull myself up and head to the kitchen. Rui. I stop short. Rui's zeroed in on my stove, sprinkling ham cheese over a bubbling layer of egg, humming a catchy little tune. The apron tied to her waist should be way too big for her, but somehow it looks perfect. Wait, this is Rui? Rui Hayata? Get a grip. Yama, get a grip. Get a no, it's too late. Welcome home, honey. You must be starving. I prepared dinner just for you. Oh, wow, we've gone crazy. Wow, I'm so lucky for marrying such a wonderful woman. Not to mention adorable. Oh, sweetie, I'm the lucky one. Look at your chiseled jaw and your beautiful eyes. I'm not the one who's a work of art, baby. <laughs> well, why don't you have a seat, pumpkin dear? Dinner is almost served. I simply can't wait to taste your delicious food, angel. What would you prefer? Darling, dinner, a bath, or me? Wow, we're getting we're getting some heated up there. Oh, sugar, we both know the answer to that question. In that case, love, the first course will be your lips. Oh my God! <laughs> my first, my fist. Oh God. I immediately jerked back to reality. The terrible vision dis dissipating into thin air. Well, that escalated quickly. I don't even want to know what would what would bring such a terrible image to mind. Rui and me married? I shudder on the inside. Not that she's, well, bad or anything. We understand each other more than anyone else. But then... We'd have to be in a romantic relationship, and romance in high school is just... Well... We could end up losing our friendship entirely, which would suck. And is 99.9999% likely, given my great luck. Crap! What am I even thinking about? Back to reality. What are you making? Uh, omelets? Are you sure? She nudges me in the side, but she's smiling. Plate, please. Uh, I don't have plates. Plate, idiot. Yeah, yeah. Your majesty, I suppose I will get you plates. We keep things light and teasing as I reach into a cabinet and pass a plate to Rui. She freezes slightly when my shoulder brushes against hers, but I pretend not to notice. Just what the doctor ordered, one premium plate, imported directly from the mystical land of Denmark. I graciously accept this offering, O oh, humble servant. May there be lasting peace between our countries. She, she deftly slides the omelet into the plate on one fluid motion, dipping into a slightly curtsy as I dig in. Delectable flavor of mozzarella, cheddar, ham, and mushrooms explode into my mouth. Am I in heaven? Rory beams proudly. That good? As if an angel made itself. Oh, wait, one did. Oh my god. So corny. Sometimes I swear that there's someone else in this head of mine. It's delicious. 
The genuine heart-rendering smile that spreads across her face just makes my stomach sink. That's not the kind of smile you make when you're complimented on your cooking by a friend. Just a friend, that is. She looks like she's jumped over the moon. That kind of shining, beautiful smile that is only made when the smile is utterly happy and completely ignorant that they're utterly happy. I want her to be happy, but false hopes is just too cruel. Maybe, maybe there's something I can do to put her down without hurting her. Hey, Rui, do you ever think that maybe we hang out too much? What? Gentle, be gentle. Be the gentlest human being on earth. Except the thing is quite possibly the worst at is being gentle. What? Except the thing I'm quite possibly worst at is being gentle. Okay, there. Like, the sentence did not make sense. You know, high school is the time to explore, especially since we're getting ready for university. So maybe you should be spending time just, you know, looking at other things, going to events, stuff like that. You're telling me that you're going to an event with people? Wow. Okay. I'm saying that we shouldn't be together so often. Her face immediately falls. Damn it. I already know that my words have hit her harder than I have intended. After all, pretty much all we've been doing for the past 10 years has been hanging out. We were each other's only constant amidst new locations, new schools, new friends, that one firm foundation that's there until the end of time. If you separate Rui from Yama and Yama from Rui, I'm not sure what you would find. To have me, who's always been relying on her, leeching off of her, suggests that he wants to go on his own way and do his own thing. Well, it's awfully short-sighted and ungrateful. But I guess that's what I am, really. Because I'm too scared that Rui will truly, honestly end up falling in love with me. Not that I have any clue why she would, but insurance, insurance is key. Look, I appreciate this, but I'm not a kid anymore, you know. I can take care of myself just fine. That's not true. Like... I know the place needs a good cleaning. I don't need someone else to tell me. I... I attempt to soften the blow as much as I can. I like hanging out with you, but when it comes to this point, I think... I'm sorry, Yama. I didn't mean to offend you. You... what? I wasn't trying to replace her. I freeze. A sudden pain fills my lungs, like I'm breathing on, in fire. My vision spins for a moment and... No. I fight it. Then it's gone. My knees suddenly go weak and I stagger forward, quickly catching myself on the couch. Rui, Rui rushes forward, but I quickly throw out a hand. This. You see this? You're being a burden now. Their words are too harsh, and I regret them as soon as they slip out. Can you just let me think right now? It's what I've always said whenever I wanted to be alone. Well, and truly alone. The need to think has nothing to do with it, and Rui knows this. I'll, I'll be right out. Goodbye. To make her feel this way is despicable. The back of my mind congratulates me with a wry, Well, you got what you wanted. She'll make some other friends now. I silently watch Rui as she slips her shoes and abruptly fixes me with a pleading look. Um, see you tomorrow? Because she wants to know that everything will be okay because she wants everything to return to normal. I should go the whole way. I should say no, probably not, or 
Maybe. We'll see. Instead, I send an automatic smile. Yeah. See you, to see you Tamarui. Have a good night, Yama. The relief in her voice is palpable as she closes the door behind her. It takes everything in me to stop myself from catching up to her and offering her to walk her back. Why is it that when I really comes down to it, I can't even push people away properly? Given my prickly personality, I would have thought that I could do at least that. Guess not. Though, guess it's just another thing to add to the list of things Yama can't do. I kind of wonder if there's anything that's not on this list. Well, that's going to be all for tonight. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And as always, don't forget to tickle that like button. Because you know it wants it. No matter what it says.